Hello, my name is Lisa, and you are watching One Lisa Show. Today is all about the So Yellow for Endo Challenge. I'm going to talk a lot about things, but I'm going to try to make this a nice, brief, is that possible, uh, vlog. I am one of the featured vloggers for the So Yellow for Endo Challenge, and that is a sewing challenge in the month of March because there aren't enough. What we are doing is trying to raise money and awareness for endometriosis and endometriosis research. And basically, you to enter this, there are prizes. It is worldwide, but it is being hosted by Jess. So what if I sew? She has tons of great prizes. I'm going to start popping some things up on the screen. It's very simple to enter. You are going to sew something yellow, and then we'll talk about what I'm wearing today. It could be partially yellow, yellow accented, orange and gold are also okay. You're going to donate a one pound or more to the So Yellow for Endo Just Giving page. The link and all the links will be in the description box below. There are, um, you want to sew something yellow, a garment yellow, take a picture of yourself and post it on Instagram. And you want to use the hashtag So Yellow for Endo 24. You're going to post this on Saturday, March 23rd, and tag Jess, so what if I sew, in your picture, and you said hashtag, it makes it much easier for her to find all the entries. There are tons of vloggers. There's a vlogger train for this, so every day there's a new featured vlogger, and there's also a couple Instagram live interviews. There's even, since I live in the U.S., this won't apply to me because I can't just hop on the expressway and go. But there is a party. It is for the first time ever. So Yellow for Endo is having a party. And that is at So Me Sunshine in London on March 23rd. So you can wear something yellow. And uh, there is a cost to attend that. But all that money, it's a donation to go to Endometriosis UK. Why is Jess doing this? Well, endometriosis affects 1 in 10 women. It affected me, and I actually it affected me after the fact, but it still affected me. Let me start with what I'm wearing. This would be a perfect item to make and enter. I use scraps. This is a Frankie T by Tilly and the Buttons. I'm not a huge yellow wearer, but yellow makes my heart sing. How the color makes me feel, even though it might not be one of my colors for my, my face. There is a lot of sun coming in today, so bear with me. Let me start off with my endometriosis journey, my story. It's not really a journey, it's a story. And then I have some great patterns and suggestions if you would like to take part in this endometriosis challenge, which I, I'm going to, and I'm looking forward to it. So very quickly, I wanted to take part in this challenge and I wanted to be a, one of the featured vloggers specifically because in October I had a hysterectomy. If you've been following my vlog, you might already know that. I am 47. When I was 36, I was diagnosed with a rare leukemia called acute promyelocytic leukemia, otherwise known as APL. And when I went through treatment for that, I also endured chemo-induced menopause. And about two years after my chemo was complete and I was in remission, my menopause reversed. I was 36 at the time, so my menopause reversed, I want to say, around 40. That was great. When it reversed, it was very different. My monthlies were incredibly uh, painful. I was very fatigued. Everything about them was different down to what I saw when I went to the bathroom. It was not fun. And it wasn't, I felt like nothing was right. It wasn't normal. I'm not saying this happened because I am not a medical professional. I'm not saying it happened because of my cancer or the chemo-induced menopause. I'm not saying, I'm not making presumptions of any kind. I'm just saying I noticed an extreme difference to how things were with my body beforehand and then after. 
we knew that there was a good chance I was not going to have children when I was diagnosed with APL because of the medications, the drugs that they used to treat it. The chemos included a lot of very heavy medications. I took arsenic for a long time. I had uh, 10 weeks of arsenic. I took very high doses of trentanoin. Yes, it's not just for your face. It is a derivative of vitamin A, and it also mixed with the arsenic helps reverse your body back to making blood normally again. Anyway, so we knew there was a good chance that I wasn't going to be able to have children or uh, because of my age and all of the complications that I had during my treatment. We also knew that those drugs could permanently damage my aches. My doctor had um, given me many different options. She had done some tests and they had found I was diagnosed with adenosis, which is the evil stepsister of endometriosis. Nothing was mentioned of endometriosis at that time. Fast forward to last summer, I had some stomach pains and I went to the urgent care. I broke out in a fever. I developed sepsis. I was in the hospital for a week and I had inflammation of my colon and where that inflammation was, was touching my left ovary and that left ovary was three times its normal size. It was, it had a blood filled cyst and they monitored that for a couple of months and we did more tests and they determined that ovary had to come out. They were gonna keep the right ovary at that time. And there was talk that the uterus might also go. So in October, last October, I had gone in for surgery and before the surgery, minutes before I was out, I saw my doctor, my surgeon, and I had told her, take out what you have to, but please leave what you can. She was supposed to leave the right ovary so I could still have my hormones. And here we go. <laughs> I woke up from surgery and she had to remove absolutely everything. She had to remove the cervix, the uterus. She had to remove both ovaries, both my fallopian tubes. There we, I knew this was gonna happen. I knew that was gonna happen. Um, she had to remove everything when she went in to take out the left ovary and the fallopian tube. I had lots of scar tissue, lots of scarring, and it was stage three endometriosis. I didn't even realize there were stages, let alone <laughs> I, that I had endometriosis. Now she had suggested that with the adenomosis, there could be complications, there could be other things she would find. And the adenomosis was diagnosed through ultrasounds. But I had at this point had a handful of CT scans. I had had three or four ultrasounds in the past year. The other, the right ovary had to go. It had at that point in the matter of a month developed a cyst and was double the size it should have been. And it did not look like a normal cyst to her. They biopsied everything and everything was cancer free, but it was determined that I had stage three endometriosis. So there was a lot of scar tissue and what should have been a relatively, um, routine procedure. It was robotic assisted. The surgery lasted much longer than my, than I was told it would. It was about seven hours of surgery. And uh, I had to go through, now I'm on hormones. I take Primarin every day. The recovery was way harder than I thought it was going to be. And my doctor had told me that I would 
not be uh, able to drive for two weeks. And then I would have eight to 10 weeks of recovery after that, where I had to be very careful of how much weight I carried, doing stairs, strenuous exercise, anything like that. So before my surgery, she did prompt me and told me to do certain things like clean your house really good because you're not going to be able to clean um, as you normally did. I had to wear like this belt around my uh, stomach. I have some scars. I have five scars and my boyfriend calls it my frown. And I'll actually show you if I lift up my belly. These are looking really good, but you can see here, here, and here. I feel like I've talked too much about this, it's kind of gross, but that's what this is about. I had no idea I had endometriosis. I had no idea um, what the options were, but at that point it was too late. Now let's get a little bit more happy because I am alive, I am healthy. I am through that eight to 10 weeks and that was not fun. I feel like that was harder for me than anything else. I feel like that recovery from having that hysterectomy was harder than two years of chemo for having blood cancer. I'm saying it out loud so you realize this is serious. Blood Leukemia was really hard. Leukemia was so hard but it was strung out. I had chemo every day, then I'd get like two weeks off, and then I'd have chemo every day again for another month, and then I'd have like two weeks off. I would get sick, I would throw up, I would um, not be, I would sleep 20 hours a day. I had absolutely no energy. I had people wanting to feed me. <laughs> this was hard because I was conscious not comfortable and I wanted to do things and I couldn't. So that why it, is why it was hard for me because I want, I felt like a slug. Whereas when I was suffering from leukemia and in on the road to recovery, those two years I had this goal and I was told it's okay to sleep and nobody wanted me to move and I didn't have the energy. This was very hard and this was physically painful where that was very exhausting. They were different, but it was, it was not fun. However, let me give you a couple of uh, ideas because not yellow is not a color that I think many people gravitate to, to sew. That's just um, something I've noticed. It is a very bright and cheery color. I do have a couple of yellow fabrics and if you've watched my earlier vlog which was all about the so frugal challenge you will see that there um i do have a couple of yellowish yellow fabrics i'm going to show you one of them again so i have two fabrics that i had in my stash one is more like a golden rod so it's kind of an orangey yellow it's it's stunning it really is up against this yellow, it doesn't look like yellow, but if I wasn't wearing this, you would say this was a beautiful golden color. I love this, and I have about a, one and a half meters. It is, and by the way, it is a woven viscose. I think it's a woven viscose chalet, to be frank with you, and I believe I got it from Minerva, and it was relatively inexpensive. I really do, so you could see when the sun hits it, that bright golden color. I do like this fabric. So I'm going to, it's very flowy. And then I have a quilting cotton from Joann's that I got a couple years ago. And I think I have about two or three yards of this. And it is, so it's a cotton woven. And it has lemons and accented with orangey red and pink flowers and sage colored leaves. It's so pretty. I, this is a fabric I've had that I haven't wanted to cut into because to me it's like a precious. But it is a nice lightweight cotton woven. And here are my patterns. So bear with me. You can always do a Frankie T from Tilly and the Buttons like this. But... 
that lemon fabric, let's talk about the lemon fabric. I have McCall's 8358. It is a vintage 1970s Laura Ashley pattern. And it is a fancy sundress with kind of little flutters of ruffles. And I absolutely loved this. I got this last year. Let me show you the line drawings. It's just really, <sighs> I'm a 70s, I, I am a 60s gal that was born in the 70s. I love 60s, 70s, and 80s clothing to the max. But this, beautiful. And I think this is perfect for spring and summer right now. It's kind of reversible. <sighs> it's got a crisscross or a knot, and on the back, the same. I want to make this this summer. This is the Carolyn Pajamas by Closet Core. This is a classic pattern. I have made many pairs of the pajama pants because I'm more of a pajama pant girl, but I have also done the top. And one hack you can do is to take that top and just extend it down and make it like a sleep, um, a gown. That would be really cute with some pretty piping. For the golden rod, for the golden rod, we have this is a free pattern, so you can double dip and do both challenges, the So Frugal Challenge and the So Yellow for Endo. Nissan Fove Tilda Blouse. I talked about this in the So Frugal Challenge, so check out that video. But this is a beautiful blouse with some very delicate details and pin tucks. And I think I have not made it yet, but it has been on my list uh, for about four months. Finally, with that goldenrod viscose chalet, this is Simplicity 9386. I have made one of these blouses. They're another vintage blouse or in the 1960s vintage pattern. I'm going to show you the line drawings as well. It has a button down the back, which is very different. They do have, I believe there's a bus start. And there's different necklines and sleeve option lengths. So this is interesting because you can make this more of a work outfit, but this way you have a pop of color. Honestly, I think I've talked about this in the past with this exact fabric. It is stunning. And in the picture, the model is wearing something similar and it has flower petal collar. And I think that's really cute. I don't know if I... Am experienced enough to make that look pretty but the other options would work great and just to have that as a layering piece so it would be your base layer and then the button detail in the back I will give you buttons all the way down the back it's not an easy feat to put on and take off by yourself but I will say I think it's an intriguing fashion detail. It does serve a purpose. You might have to have somebody else help you dress in the morning, but um, I think it would look really cool. I just think it will look unique and cool and different and something we don't see all the time because we're so used to ready to wear pull over our heads kind of clothes. So once I start talking about sewing and I start talking about patterns, I can smile again and the tears go away. I think Jess is right on the money. This is a great challenge because even though some of us go through some emotional things and we've got, we've got our own journeys um, and, and I have mine and you have yours. But once we start talking sewing, we can smile and we can um, shift our mindset. Those are my ideas for the Sew Yellow for Endo Challenge. And I thought about pajamas, honestly, just because sometimes people don't want to wear yellow, but it could be yellow accents. But if you wanted to do majority yellow and it's not your color or you don't feel com confident in wearing yellow, you can always make it pajamas. And then when you wake up in the morning, you're wearing a bright, cheery color and your mind is in a bright, cheery place, hopefully. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching and hanging in till the end. If you liked what you saw, please give me a thumbs up. Please leave me a comment if there is anything you want to share because I have 
I have poured a lot on today. If there's anything you want to share, pop it in the comments. I read all the comments. I read all the comments and I try to respond to all of them as well. If you haven't followed me already, please consider doing so if you would like more content and also check out the So Frugal Challenge video I posted last week. Thank you again for watching. I hope you do something creative wherever you are in the world today. And please consider making a donation to help support endometriosis research. Thanks. Bye-bye.